most of us take things for granted. Did you ever ask yourself how do we, humans, acquire new knowledge? How does humanity, the human species, learn through discoveries, investigations, explorations, research and methods of science? It is a complicated journey, a path. It is a process in which science helps. In this video, we will talk about what that is. How did we come to different discoveries? Comprehension of the world we live in, the nature around us. How did we dare to imagine and search for the smaller things which are not visible by our eyes? Things like cells, bacteria, viruses, genes, molecules, atoms, electron clouds, quarks. While well, we are still imagining unimaginable strings. Who knows what we will yet discover down there? And on the other side of the scale, unthinkable big things, other planets, uncountable galaxies, black holes. Can you even dare to imagine what is out there? In that vast emptiness of space where our planet is not even a grain of sand on an endless beach. Let's go together on a short journey about methods of science, scientific inquiry and inquiry-based learning. One of the most beautiful human characteristics is not knowing, but wanting to know. That internal need to grow, to learn, to understand. The curiosity. No matter what happens, always. But I mean, always be curious. Question the world around you. Question everything. Never allow yourself to be satisfied with superficial or partial answers. Grow constantly. Explore and discover. Learn. The beautiful thing about learning is that nobody can take it away from you. What? Curiosity to figure out the world around us is something deeply rooted in us since we were children. And science and research starts with asking questions. And that is not easy at all. To formulate a good question. But that path to find a meaningful answer is not easy. During the journey, you have to be extremely persistent, patient, brave, and above all, careful. You have to dare to walk where you haven't walked before. If you're lucky or brave enough, go where no one has gone before. A recipe does not exist. There's no cookbook to follow. You have to collect the data. You have to gather the evidence, observe, identify relevant information, seek for understanding, explore different sets of information, use critical thinking. This together will be the evidence in the light of the answer you try to reach. You have to constantly look for smaller pieces of knowledge, which you can merge together in a bigger jigsaw picture. Scientists already did some footwork. Check the literature, find relevant information, get the understanding of the theory, and distinguish it from a model. Get to the understanding why is a model some type of reality simplification, simplified version of a phenomena we want to understand, relationships we want to discover. How to develop your idea, how to design inquiry around it and allow the question to be answered. And after a whole lot of thinking, brainstorming, acquiring various pieces of knowledge, digging for understanding, imagining your expectations, Assume the outcome, the end goals, the answer. Using the scientific vocabulary, that would be framing a hypothesis. Be brave enough and dare to propose an answer, a solution to your inquiry, goal of your quest. Create a vision. Do not fear to be eccentric in your ideas. For everything now accepted, there was an eccentric idea once. Dream and imagine. Keep your head up, but stand still with both feet on the ground. Work hard to develop some kind of a prototype, something concrete, something you can even grab your hands on. The real thing, the equation maybe, relation, the product. Ensure that your idea is testable, usable, applicable, that you can verify it, that you can check it somehow that it works. This process can take a while to explore options and truly understand your problem, learn about it, develop and adjust different ideas. In that process, it is completely normal, and I would even dare to say important, to feel miserable, lost and confused. Patience and persistence is important. Bravely continuing your quest. Quest for understanding and journey of learning. And that is the only way to learn about new things. One of the equally important elements on that path is knowing what to do with all those new things, new pieces of information by comparing the evidence, the data, 
differentiate important from not so important things, useful from not useful information, relevant from not relevant, truth from fallacy. By knowing how to test your ideas and develop an experiment, a measuring approach, at the same time figuring out what are different factors and variables which might influence your conclusion. It is important to understand the not dependent variable, the variables which are under your control from dependent variable, those ones which you measure and don't know their values at the beginning, and the third type of variables, those ones which are not changing at all, so-called constant variables. Visualize your expectations, graphical representation of your data, how variables are interconnected, your solution. What does your data look like? What it can tell you? There is a proverb how a picture is worth 1000 words. And it is important to know how to analyze the measurements, to figure out the relationship and write it down in that mathematical language, the beautiful universal language of the universe. Because a formula can be worth 1000 pictures. Keep in mind that whatever you do, you make mistakes. And that is so cool. Let yourself make errors and learn from them. Because the only real mistake is the one from which we are learning nothing. Science has a great tool to face the mistakes, the errors in measurements, in analysis. It is called error analysis, that process of evaluating the uncertainties. That process is crucial to help you phrase even better questions. Draw and formulate a conclusion. Conclusion which makes sense, which can be described, placed in some kind of a context. Conclusion which is offering explanation to your initial inquiry, raised questions, your curiosities. Conclusion which can help you to make improvements, upgrade, to fine-tune your idea, to discover new approaches, questions, beautiful details and unknowns, the path to better conclusions. What does it mean to conclude and explain something? Your brain has to constantly work and think about what does it work? How does it work? How does it learn? Search for fallacies in thinking, biases which can mislead you. Did you know how many people are just thinking how they are thinking? Well, in principle, they are just reshuffling their own prejudices and misconceptions. That proposal for improvement is your critical reflection on the entire process. That reflection which will enable you to learn something, something new. That should be constantly present in you. That should be an engine which is pushing you forward, which helps you to make decisions. And in that process, it is normal to make mistakes. Because the person who never made a mistake, never tried anything new, never created anything. The conclusion has to be built on the facts and not on opinions or beliefs. It has to be objective. You have to learn to distinguish data from evidence, from interpretation of evidence. Always be curious, flexible, adjustable, open-minded. Be capable of admitting your mistakes and changing yourself because the people who are not changing are not people but monuments and bravely go forward again in the same process, collecting the evidence, developing the hypothesis, developing different experiments, models, comparing results and data, acquiring new information, new knowledge, asking new questions, better formulating questions, and so on, and so on. Good luck.